Hey YouTube, so I did want to do a update video on the shrimp. I'm going to start from the back so that you guys can see some different shrimp first. Uh, otherwise, I usually always start at the front. Um, I'm just going to go tank from tank, so it's probably going to be a, a little bit of a longer video, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, the chocolate tank. Uh, these guys have been breeding actually pretty well. I think there's maybe eight or ten females in here and I don't know five to ten males something like that yeah they've just been breeding really well ever since I got them um, these are uh, the blue dreams I picked these up at an auction um, extremely high quality from what I can tell uh, you really never know until you get a month or two in uh, a lot of people feed them color enhancing flakes and other color enhancing food and so uh, they could just have a fake color um, although they, I've had them for about a month, I got a great deal on them as I talked about in the last video, and uh, they've been breeding really well. I'm excited to see how uh, how the offspring turn out. These are some uh, royal blue uh, calls. Um, they have actually colored up a lot since I put them in this tank. They used to just be striped, and uh, as you can see, some of them actually went back to uh, being royal blue. Although they still have the stripes, so I don't like keeping them in the colony. Uh, you want to get your percentage as high as possible when it's when you're talking about um, offspring of the royal blue and uh, a lot of people think royal blues breed true but that is not at all the case um, i had a situation not too long ago where uh where a customer was was a little upset because they 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 thought that royal blues breed true and then they got offspring and uh, some of them were uh, black tigers with orange eyes and some of them were black tigers or blue tigers with orange eyes and uh and needless to say they weren't up they they were led to believe that they breed true so they definitely don't but anyway moving on this is the blue pearl tank um, again i got these at an auction i got them really cheap and there was a lot of big females in there so i figured you know I might as well pick them up they're they're pretty clear especially because they're on the white substrate so they kind of bleach out their color um, but if I can get them breeding, that's all that really matters to me. And then I can uh, move them from, from a light substrate to a dark substrate after that. Um, mm, these are the snow or snowballs. As you can see, there's a big old buried female. Um, they've been doing pretty well. Um, no complaints. Again, you really can't tell how well they're doing because it's on white substrate. But again, that reduces the stress on them because they're not trying to, to blend into the black substrate. And uh, overall, I've seen that these guys do a lot better on, on white substrate, but you can't see them. So it's, it's specifically just for breeding purposes. Um, they're constantly producing babies, although I, I never really see too, too many babies. But um, I'll tell in the next couple of months or so. Um, these are the chocolates. Again, more chocolates. Uh, these guys actually have a ton of babies in here. If I can zoom in, you can probably see one. I don't know. I can't. Oh, there's one right there. And uh, they're just doing really well. I'm really happy with that tank. Um, this is a mixture of Blue Dreams and Carbon Release. And uh, just kind of seeing where this line will go. As you can see, a lot of them are really black, a really dark color. More of a blue, but you really can't tell in the video. Um, these guys have been breeding pretty well. Um, I haven't seen too many babies, but I've seen um, 15 buried females at a time. There's a big buried one right in front of us. And so uh, so they're doing exceptionally well. Coming around the corner, I, I got some yellows in. Um, these guys are, are really pretty. They, they've been doing well. I've seen one buried female. I'm not sure if the babies have survived. The tank's a 40 gallon, so very rarely will you actually see the babies until they get bigger. There looks like... Looks like there's a baby there, but I don't know if that one came in as a baby and just grew up. So it's hard telling. Um, some more yellows. These are some lower quality ones that I got from a uh, from a fellow hobbyist. Um, I mean, they've colored up a little bit, but you know, not not the best quality. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll try a couple generations, see if I can cull them and, and get the the coloration better. If not, then I'll, I'll probably just abandon them or use them as just low grade. These are the orange rillies, um, or not orange rillies, they're just orange pumpkins. That one doesn't look too orange, but we'll see what happens. Um, again, there's not too, too many in here, just a lot younger ones. We'll uh, just kind of see how they grow up. These ones are, which you actually can't see any. There's, there's one that you might be able to see. Um, they're 
green jade calls, I do believe. A lot of them are blue. They always stay in the moss. For whatever reason, they never come out of the moss. They don't even come out to eat. And so I don't know how they're still alive, but what they do, orange rillies are, sorry, I keep saying orange really. I must really like orange rillies. These are red rillies. Um, they've been breeding pretty well. The tank's really dirty, but you know, I, I actually like that because then the babies have a place to, uh, to eat and uh, it's just overall health of the tank. And so, uh, so I'll take it. This is the call tank or the quarantine tank. Um, these guys are always doing good. I mean, they're just, they breed amongst themselves and it's interesting to see the colorations they produce. A couple fish in there that probably pick off the young. But again, it's just simply a call and quarantine tank, so not too concerned about it. More red rillies. These are some, some really nice ones up here. Um, they have been breeding. You can see there was a, a baby that just swam across the screen right there. Um, there's a baby on the screen right there. And so they're doing really well. Orange pumpkins. Uh, you, you get some really diverse colors in here, which I really like. And uh, these guys are always doing well. They're, you can see there's a couple big buried mamas. There's one, there's one. And uh, they're constantly breeding. So really excited to kind of separate this tank and start some more tanks with uh, the offspring from there. These are black diamond calls. Um, they're just a form of a chocolate shrimp, and so uh, so these guys are actually doing really well. They're, I mean, I'm really pleased with it. Um, he provided a ton of uh, ton of big females, so I was excited about that. Down here, I got tiger shrimp and cherry shrimp together. Um, I really don't look at this tank too often. Um, I mean, I can see some movement. There's a, a baby flying across the screen, and so apparently it's doing well. Uh, it's just one of those tanks that you can just kind of set it up and forget about it and in a couple months see what happens. I continuously just feed it and go from there. Here's this tank. This is, uh, these were sold to me as, <laughs> as blue rillies. Um, but uh, honestly, I don't know what they are. Um, I mean, they're doing well. They, they almost just look like uh, red rillies now. And so that might be what they are. Um, I'm just kind of letting them breed, see what happens in a couple generations, see if they're if they're anything worth keeping around, or if I need the space, I can get rid of them. And then here's another tank of them. I mean, as you can see, they're, they're breeding and they're doing well. But uh, again, I just, you know, they might be blue rillies, they might not be. A, I don't really know. I haven't done enough research to really figure out what they are. Orange really tank, and or, again, orange really, I keep saying that. Uh, these are just orange sakuras. Um, some nice ones in there. They got the, the Colombian ramhorn snails in there. And uh, this tank's doing pretty good. No complaints. L144s, blue eyed plecos, not a shrimp, so I'll skip it. Another blue dream tank. Uh, this is probably my best blue dream tank. Um, just because they're, they're consistent. I mean, you, you just can't beat that blue color. And again, this is a video, so you know it's not enhanced at all. That's really what it looks like. And uh, just a. Just some beautiful shrimp that come out of here. And you can see there's some babies on the on the glass. So it's doing really well. Snowball tank, not doing so hot. That's why I'm, I'm glad I have the other one set up. Um, they're just having a hard time. I don't know what it is. I don't know why my parameters can't keep snowballs healthy. But uh, just for whatever reason, I, I just can't do it. And so I keep trying different parameters, keep trying different things. But uh, they are breeding, but once they breed once or twice, they die. And it sucks, but you know, I'm constantly working on it and trying to figure it out. And then hopefully I'll get a steady strain of them and uh, they'll start doing good and I can start selling them to you guys and, and spread them around the hobby. These are just yellow Neos. Um, some nice ones, some not so nice ones. Uh, haven't started breeding yet, um, but you know, they are what they are. I'm just kind of holding on to them, letting them see if they'll breed. Another tank of them. And uh, if they breathe, then great. If not, then I'll break the tank down and start all over again and see uh, see what happens. Red tigers, uh, this is they're doing great. I mean, I have no complaints at all with this tank. Um, I got them when they were a little bit older, and then I've had them for probably about six months now. And uh, they just they've had one batch of babies. They're all uh, saddled up, and so hopefully they'll get another batch going soon. 
but there's probably a uh, hundred babies in here or so so that's that's exciting uh, makes me happy tangerines um, they didn't do good on their first round of, of being buried and so I'm hoping they're more used to their parameters now and uh, I'll get some some successful uh, berries out of them and uh, some babies and uh, I mean they're really nice they're they're pretty pretty shrimp uh, I'm just hoping that they they start breeding for me orange-eyed blue tigers um, again not the best quality uh, as you can see there there's some not so pretty ones but there's some pretty ones and so uh, so I'm just hoping these guys start breeding uh, there was one buried female I haven't seen babies yet I'm kind of looking around the tank now as I talk and still don't see any but you know hopefully sooner or later um, they will start breeding really well for me these are black tigers orange-eyed um, pretty angry mean little suckers <laughs> shrimp fights uh, these guys are doing well they're they're breeding and uh, they're they're aggressive as you can see constantly fighting and uh, you can see there's a couple of babies around them and so they're, they're breeding well and there's a couple of buried those two fighting are two big females so they're probably buried now and just being aggressive kind of cool so I like this tank it's just a matter of time until it populates These are Cardina Bobolti. Um, again, an un unclassified, again, there's a blue dream in there, but uh, unclassified species, really. We really don't know too, too much about them. Um, but they're kind of ugly, to be honest. But, you know, I keep them and, and breed them, and it's just another species that, that I enjoy having. And so, uh, so it's always cool just to see what comes of them. Um, this is my high grade uh, cherry shrimp tank. I, I don't call them fire reds, and I don't call them all the sakuras and stuff like that. Just because there's such a, uh, nah, it's really, really dark. Let's see if I can get it later. Oh well. But um, really, it's just like, you really don't know what you have until they're, they're older. But uh, those ones are breeding, breeding really well and the babies have been nice and nice and red. So I just call them high grade cherries and uh, sell them accordingly. And then uh, this is bl a blue velvet tank. Whenever you put blue velvets on white substrate, I've seen that, that they either turn a, uh, a green color, like this one right here, or uh, they, they just stay their nice blue color. So it's, it's a good way to call out the bad ones and uh, keep the good ones. And as you can see, there's, there's some berry ones in there. And uh, as far as I know, this, I mean, this could be where the green jades come, came from. Uh, you don't really hard telling to be honest you, you really never know where the the shrimp are bred from and where they originate and all that kind of stuff so it could be the origin of the green jade and uh, just the green ones that's what they did they selectively bred them over time but uh, these guys are doing well they're breeding blue velvets on black on uh, black substrate so they're, they're a lot better coloration these guys are breeding too um, I don't know if you can see the buried ones or not but they're they're definitely doing well, and as you can see, there's tons of babies all over the all over the ground. More high grade cherries. Um, this is from from a good colony, and uh, these guys again are breeding really really well, and so I'm excited to start offering these these this winter. My oh finally my orange really tank. This is, uh, this is my, my biggest success tank, and the reason why is, is all the adults died on me. They, they slowly died away. As you can see, I put a red X on it, which means I was going to reset this tank and tear it down. And um, the, the adults ended up dying off, and uh, I went to go tear it down like a month after they all died off. And uh, there was babies everywhere, so I'm like, holy smokes. And then, uh, as you can see, the babies grew up, and now they're breeding, and now there's... There's babies all over the glass, and that's yeah, a baby right there, but it's too hard to focus. And so it's, it's going really well. Um, some more um, fire reds or red cherry shrimp. I don't really know the grade of these ones yet. There's some really nice ones in there, but I don't know what the, the babies will be produced as. And uh, here's a better idea of, of the reds. I mean, there's just some really, really nice ones. But uh, again, they're all breeding well and doing fine. It's just uh, just getting them to uh, to have them babies and have the babies grow up and be able to stock them and have a website to sell them and stuff like that. Uh, Tangerine Tigers, doing good. Um, this is some more Orange Rillies. And then uh, some Super Tigers. Uh, the Super Tigers are doing well. 
Um, they, they bred once for me and then I got maybe 10 or 15 babies out of them. And then now the, they're bigger and it's hopefully gonna breed again soon. You can see there's a huge female. And so I'm excited to finally get USA bred super tigers um, because they're such a hard species to find right now. And it would be good to have them here in, uh, in the US. And these are just regular tiger shrimp. Uh, you definitely will not be able to see in this tank. It, it's really hard to see. It's got the, the algae all over the glass. But uh, they are doing well. Had some problems with that tank, but I feel like I, I've overcome them. And uh, now I can start breeding them. This is another um, carbon really slash blue really slash blue dream tank. Um, don't really know. Uh, but they're they're really blue. They're nice and they're breeding really well. And so I guess that's a that's a positive. Super Princess Bee Tank. Again, I'm I'm pretty positive. I'm the only person in the U.S. breeding these right now. Um, they're just babies all over the place. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready to set up another tank for these guys. Uh, I'll actually show it to you here in a bit. And uh, it is set up. It's just getting it ready. And so I'm excited to start really breeding these guys a lot. A pure red line. Again, a lot of people get confused what is a pure red line. They think it's just a high quality crystal red shrimp. But the truth is it's a shrimp that it's a crystal red shrimp that was never bred with snow whites to bring out the white coloration. And so usually they're a higher quality, but there are entry level ones that are cheaper. And there's some in here that are that are clear. Well they're not clear, but they're they're a lower quality. And so uh so there's just an entry level pure red line. Uh, it's a good shrimp to start with if, if you're wanting to get into pure red line. It's fairly uh, inexpensive considering how much pure red line costs. And so as you can see, these guys are doing excellent. There's, there's shrimp all over the place. You got the red tigers. Um, I got these guys in a low pH and they do not like it. And so, I mean, you can see a couple babies. I'm counting three, four babies. And a couple females, a couple of males, a couple of adult shrimp. Uh, they just they prefer uh, neutral pH, seven pH, and I put them in there because I didn't know if they would do well or not, and it was just kind of an experiment. But they they have low survival rate at that pH. Um, this is another orange really tank. It's actually an orange really tank. I'm not misspeaking this time, and uh, I don't really know how they're doing. I mean, they have babies, and but I never see buried females, and I, but I always see babies. And so, uh, so it's just one of those tanks, I just set it and forget about it. These are Aurora Blues, probably the, the one shrimp that I'm most excited for right now. Um, these guys are a wild shrimp from south, southern China. And, uh, and I actually have two buried females in here. Um, let me see if I can see them. No. But there are two nice buried females in here. And uh, they've been they they've been doing really good. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm excited to start offering these to you guys because um, again, this is a fairly hard to find shrimp, and they're they're pretty expensive. Like I um I bought 30 of them, and I, I had a wholesale price, and so I got a good deal on them. But when they came in, they I lost out of the 30. I think I lost 17. Like 12 were dead on arrival, and then eight of them died over time. And so I got no reimbursement. That's a, that's one of those things with doing wholesale is they will not reimburse uh, depending on who you go through. So that was no fun, but you know, it is what it is. Now they're breeding, so hopefully I'll get enough babies to uh, to compensate the fact that, that I lost so many. Uh, crystal Red Tank. Crystal Reds, I, I do so well with them. They, they just love my water for whatever reason. You can see here's another one down here. And uh, there's just Crystal Reds everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Like I'm not gonna lie, probably in this tank, I would say there's at least 500, if not more. And then probably another three or 400 in here. And then, um, and then I got one more tank over here that we'll get to. This is my Michelin tank. Uh, Michelin, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, there's, I, I don't know if there's a proper pronunciation. I call Mislings. And. Um, they're doing well. They're they're breeding. There there's a couple buried females in here. There's some uh, bloody Marys right there. There's another one. And uh, this tank's just one of those ones again that I just I set it up and I forgot about it and just kind of let it go and see what happens. Uh, these are the Malala shrimp, and uh, they're just blue. They're 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 a lot bigger than blue velvets, 
and a lot bigger than uh, than other blue pearls and stuff like that. They have a real nice coloration on the on the dark substrate. I'm sure if you put them on white substrate, uh, like white sand or something like that, they would they would clear out. So I'd definitely keep these on a black substrate. But uh, they breed really really well. They're constantly buried. They're constantly saddled. Um, they're 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 a good species to have. They're they're again they're part of the Babolti family, and so they're unidentified. Uh, they don't really know too too much about them but you know it's one of those things that that i'm, I'm blessed to have them uh i got them from a, a good guy that that is local and he has he's had them for a long time hasn't had too much success with them but enough and um and that's how i got them from him and so so i'm really excited to, to have those and eventually again offer those to you this is the tank i'm setting up for the uh, the super princess bees i'm going to stock this up i had leeches in here before that I got some from some plants, and now I learned that you gotta do a peroxide dip, and I won't make that mistake again. So now this is finally set up, it's going, and soon to be for Super Princess Bees. Blue Dream Tank, again, wow, this is a long video, 21 minutes. Hopefully you guys are still watching. <laughs> but uh, if you're still watching, leave me a comment down below, because I wanna know if you guys uh, appreciate these long, long videos. Uh, this is another, this is the Royal Blue Tank. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm very transparent when, when I sell shrimp. I'll tell you guys whether I'm having success with them, whether um, the, they're having high rates of offspring that are, are good looking. As you can see, this is my Royal Blue Tank. I haven't called it in three or four months and uh, pretty much every single one is dark. And so it, it kind of makes me sad when people mess with me and they're like, why? I had a 50-50 uh, call rating. And it's just like, you know, well, I'm sorry. You know, you just got really unlucky. Um, I don't call that much. I do call. I don't. I don't want you guys to think I don't. They. I. I call probably 20% something like that. So they definitely don't breed true. So I just want to make that disclaimer um, that it's truth. This is one of my progress tanks. Uh, I took the highest quality royal blues I had, put them down here, and now I'm breeding them together. And I'm going to see kind of what happens with. Uh, with their offspring. As you can see, there's a couple offspring in there, maybe 10 or 15 of them. And uh, most of them turned out pretty good. Um, but again, I'm just going to keep reading them, keep experimenting with them. And once I get to the next room, I'm really going to get into uh, into line breeding with these guys. So that's exciting. Uh, a lot of fun stuff coming up. Again, another cherry shrimp tank. Um, this one, th these guys are okay. This is, this is my lower quality tank, uh, other than the other ones. And uh, they're, I mean, they're all over the glass. They're, they're breeding really, really well. And uh, I mean, they're, they're not bad coloration, not bad at all. Probably be Sakura slash Fire Red grade, something like that. A couple cherry grades in here. But they're doing okay. This is the Carbon Really tank. And uh, again, they're breeding. You can see there's, there's a buried one there and tons of babies. There's some babies. And uh, again, another another good tank doing well. Um, I find the green parasite in here every once in a while. I bought some shrimp from uh, from an importer, uh, Shrimp USA, and uh, not to name bash at all, but I, I got some shrimp from him. They came in with the green parasite, and at that time, I, I thought he, you know, I was informed that the green parasite would die on its own. It would reproduce in the aquarium. Uh, needless to say, it has reproduced in the aquarium, and so whenever I find one that has it, I. I I call it out and get rid of it. Unfortunately, have to uh, have to kill the shrimp, and it's just one of those things. It's it's sad and it sucks, but uh, I think I finally got it to the point where where I don't see it anymore. But just when you think it's gone, it always pops back up again. These again are royal blue tiger calls. These are black tigers. Um, I actually like these guys uh, a lot. I, I can't wait until they start breeding more, and I can see what the offspring look like. But there's a couple buried females in here, so. In the next couple months, it'll be interesting to see what they produce. These are Bloody Marys. They've been doing well. Um, again, you have to call them. You have to continuously be on top of it. They, they'll get some clear ones, and I just sell those as cherries. And uh, it all works out. It's good. It's fun. Tank's doing really well. Uh, getting down to the home stretch, there's more Bloody Marys. These are my higher quality ones. Um, I mean, they're just, they're really pretty. And uh, they're breeding. They're not breeding crazy good, but they, they are breeding. There's not as many shrimp in here, so you can't expect too much. 
Uh, this again is another call tank. Um, I've set it up that way. And the reason why is I, I, I ordered these shrimp in. Again, blue reallys. Every time I order blue reallys, it, it's a disaster. These came in as blue reallys and there's, there's um, chocolates in there, there's blue velvets in there, there's carbon reallys in there, uh, there's tiger shrimp, there's all kinds of stuff. The tiger shrimp I put in there, so I can't blame it on and who I got them from. But blue reallys is, is a weird thing. These are low grade, low grade blue dream. I bought them as high grade blue dream, uh, but after about three months, they lost all their color. And uh, this is the result of what what you see right now. And so, again, be careful when buy, buying blue dreams. Um, you don't want to pay too much money because a lot of the time I've found that their color will dull out over time, uh, just depending on who you're getting them from. And so always ask if they're feeding color enhancing flakes because that's our color enhancing food because you never know what you're getting. Uh, this is my chocolate tank. Again, I got another chocolate tank. Um, there's quite a few blue or royal blues in here and the reason why is I had royal blues in here before I took all of them out but they had babies before I did and so these ones are, are low quality as you can see they have some stripage on them and so I wouldn't sell these as blue dreams any or blue or royal blues anyway I would sell them as either calls or I would keep them for another generation hopefully sell them as black tigers or dyes and so again this tank's doing good you can see I won't focus again, but there's babies all over the place. And then these two tanks are empty right now. I uh, just need to set them up eventually. And then uh, the main system, the central system, it's doing good. I mean, it mainly just has uh, just has fish in it right now that I, I need to get rid of. I mean, there's some shrimp, like there's some shrimp back against this wall. Can't see, they're just cherry shrimp. I just want to see how they would do uh, with uh, the water quality. And they showed me that the ammonia was a little too high, and so I did a big water change. I got it down. Now they're living good, so it's all an experiment. It's fun. I enjoy it. Again, guys, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, 27 minutes long, uh, you are a trooper. I appreciate your support, and uh, I can't wait to finally be selling in November. I Hopefully, you guys are excited for that as well, and uh, hopefully, you guys just stay tuned. I'll talk to you guys soon. Make it a great week or month or however long it is until I talk to you next. Later.